So Swimmer Among the Stars is my debut collection of short stories. Uh, I've been writing it, well, these stories have been written over a period of about 10 years, though the bulk of the stories were written in the last five years. I think one of the stories, The Loss of Muzaffar, is, was written when I was 19 years old. But in general, they've been written recently at a time when I've begun devoting myself to fiction. Uh, and the stories range very much in subject matter. What the title story, Swimmer Among the Stars, is about uh, language extinction. It's about, it's about the last speaker of a language. Um, and I've been interested in, in endangered languages for a while. But there are other stories about all sorts of subjects. Another one is about the, uh, the real life story of the journey of an elephant, an Indian elephant, in Morocco that was based on a on an experience that was told to me when I was young uh, and one of the wonderful things about uh, about the experience of writing this story is that since it's been published uh, I heard uh, I got a message from the daughter of the Indian ambassador uh, who is a character in this story uh, and telling me how moved she was because the events of the story actually in her mind in her memory uh, took place so it's one of these unexpected experiences of writing fiction that you actually have so do you strike a chord in, with somebody's real life experiences? But in any case, the, 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 the stories range in subject matter uh, and they really are the pursuit of my historical and, and, and political imagination. Um, so I, I think one of my favorite stories in this collection is uh, a sequence that's based around my retelling of the Alexander Romance, that is a medieval tradition of stories by Alexander the Great that spread from Greek to Armenian to Persian to Turkic uh, and I've, I've read translations of these stories and retold them for the modern age. Um, is there anything else? Uh, well, I'm, I should say that I'm also at the moment writing a novel so I wouldn't necessarily say that the short story is my preferred medium but I do love uh, writing short stories. I think that they, 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 they perform a function for a writer and a reader that's invaluable. There's, you know, at a purely logistical level, the experience of reading a short story is one uh, that can be achieved very easily in a given person's day, one that the novel doesn't necessarily allow you. Um, but beyond that, I think as a writer, and as a writer who tends to embrace slightly adventurous, far-flung, sometimes fantastical premises, the short story allows you a vehicle to sustain that conceit um, that a novel, it can, that, that can be, well, and that conceit is less easily sustained over the course of a novel. So something fantastic, I have a short story for example about a coterie of diplomats trapped in near earth orbit. That is easier to write over 30 pages and I think can maintain its integrity over 30 pages in a way that it might struggle over 300 pages. I think, you know, the stories are so different in their subject matter and theme, um, but they are actually united in their tone, in the way I've told them and I think in my style of writing. So there is actually a unity in style. Um, I, I've embraced, I think, you know, I, people have, you know, the, unlike the novel, the short story or at least um, the a prose narrative segmented into short sections, is a really ancient form. We've had that for thousands of years. Um, and there's a way in which I, I'm hoping, one of my hopes for this short story collection is that it has a flavor of the old storyteller um, that is slightly pre-modern. The other ambition I have for this collection um, is that for anybody reading it, I mean, it's only available at the moment in English, so any English-speaking reader reading the stories, these stories will be as equally um, estranged from the story as they will find it familiar that I haven't written stories that privilege a particular audience geographically anywhere in the world. That, you know, you can relate to these stories as much as you can feel wonder and a sense of mystery in them. I think, I think there's a, a rhythm. Um, you know, I've read a lot. I, one of the sort of unspoken sources, I think, of inspiration that I have is I read a lot of old uh, Anglo-Saxon poetry. And I think that flavor, that, that rhythm of speaking around the fire in the mead hall, for example, is present in many of my stories. Uh, it's present in the way I construct my sentences, in the way I choose words, in the games I play with language. Um, but I think it's also present in the, in the kinds of stories I'm telling, in the often omniscient narrative tone that I've chosen, 
uh, in the slightly cavalier cosmic storytellers treatment of psychology um, I think all of those are, are, are present in the way I've written this collection and the way I've shaped these stories um, I hope that readers who buy the book who borrow the book uh, enjoy it uh, enjoy the stories and really what I really hope to do with my fiction um, more than anything else what I really hope to do with my fiction more than anything else is that you know people when people read my stories that they in, they find a sense of wonder not necessarily at the brilliance of my prose if it is brilliant or indeed at the story I'm telling but that they find a sense of wonder in my work that directs their gaze to the world outside of them uh, I really hope that my stories can instill in people a sense of wonder in the world.